Hello and welcome, I am Dexba and this is the Wingy 2, the latest creation by Mengchi. First of all, what is this? Wingy is a portable stereo resonator, which means it uses a type of synthesis called physical modeling in order to produce the bell or string-like sounds you've heard at the beginning of this video. I'm not going to go into further detail about how this kind of synthesis works. I am no expert and it would be way too easy for me to get some complicated math wrong. What I can tell you though is that a resonator needs something to excite it and I will guide you through that part of the process. Yes, I know talking about exciting an instrument sounds silly, but the idea behind that is that a resonator is there to enhance certain frequencies and with them producing the sounds we know and love. In order to do that, the initial frequency should be there already for the resonator to pick it up. So let's dive into how we can obtain that. As you can imagine, the best success rate would be with noise. Noise, by definition, contains the largest amount of frequencies. So every time we use noise as an exciter, we will end up triggering the note we chose 100% of the time. Noise can come from you caressing sensually your wingy, but also from other inharmonic sounds like water or my voice, generally speaking. I have my Digitact here, just outside the frame, and I loaded up some samples. Uh, if you hear some sounds not coming from the microphone, you know where they're coming from. But what if we wanted to use proper notes and other waveforms? As you probably know already, the usual basic waveforms, triangle, so, square, differ from each other because of the amount and arrangement of their harmonics. Every sound we hear, with a notable exception of the sine wave, will have a stronger, more prominent bass tone, the tonic, if you fancy some music lingo, and then going down in volume, a series of more subtle other sounds, called overtones, following this interval chart. Uh, I will put it here, like. By the way, this is why some chords sound better than others and why we like thirds and fifths so much. <laughs> Look how present they are in the first part where they are also the louder, the loudest. All this just to give you a general tip. Experiment with setting notes in the wingy, a third or a fifth over the note you're gonna input in order to create a nice, almost shimmer-like effect. I will play a C and I set an E and G on both of the channel of the wing. Can you hear that? All right. But what about sine waves? Since sine waves don't have any other harmonic over the bass pure tone, we will have to match the pitch of the wingy with our inputted sine wave, or the resonator will not resonate at all. But hey, that can be a cool effect too, especially if we sequence both the wingy and the sine wave generator in a way they keep crossing paths, and that's maybe the right moment to introduce the MIDI capabilities. The Wingy 2 receives MIDI via the 3.5mm jack, the adapter is included, and it helps expanding the capabilities of the instrument. MIDI, for example, is necessary to program more complex sequences than the three-node sequencer available on the Wingy itself. We can hear it now sort of moving in and out of resonator phase with the sounds coming from the Digitac. Let me set it up. I've programmed the, both of the channels of the wingy to make a C major scale, still on the Digitact, and the Digitact is sending some random notes on the C major scale, but not 
following the scale. So we can hear how the intersection of the scales is coming together. Just the sine wave, just the final result. All right, now let's check out the actual instrument. The Wingy is composed of two separate algorithms working in parallel, giving it stereo capabilities or dual mono, if you prefer. Each of the two portions has the same controls. Keyboard, the lower one is the left channel, one octave switch and one mode selector. Both the channels share the three sliders control, mix, the first on the left, between the input signal and the resonator, decay time of the resonator, and general volume. On the right, you will find the LED indicating the mode you're in, which can be independent for the left and right. That's why I say dual mono, as you can see here. We have four modes, poly, mono strings, mono bells, and cave. Let's check them out. Poly with a white LED will resonate the chord you chose. You can press together up to three keys and if you excite your wingy in the proper way we discussed before, you will obtain a chord back. So let's try with our friend C major. Let's put it like that and let's use the microphone. I think you should pick up my voice. We can boost again, like that. And we will have, yeah, it's clipping a little bit. It's clipping inside the wingy. And we will check out how we can change that behavior. So it's now outputting a chord. Note that if you switch octave, you will have to dial the notes back in. Otherwise, you won't hear the change. So let's try. One, two, three, one, two, three, testing. Let's change octave. One, two, three, you hear? Still the same octave. So now we have to dial back in the notes we want. One, two, three, one, two, three, testing. Now we are switched the octave. Mono strings in yellow and bar. I said bass before, but I, to me it sounds like <laughs> not like bars, <laughs> but like bass in red are very similar in functionality. They just differ in the sound they produce. You can still dial in up to three notes, but this time they will be cycled when the input sound goes over the set threshold. So let's try. I think we can try with the strings. It's more intelligible. And you hear now the, the threshold is very low, so the note is changing each time the microphone captures some sound. But for example, if we go with a threshold very high, still the same note, and I will have to be very loud in order to change the note. So how do we set, oops, how do we set this threshold? Simple. Just keep press the L mode button where you select the level using the white keys. And it's independent for the left and right channel. So you can have some cool effect as you heard in the handpan like <laughs> jam at the beginning of this video. And yeah, let's check out maybe the red mode too. Very similar, as I said, in functionality. And if you want only the resonator sound, we can go like that.
the last mode, Cave, in purple, will resonate all the notes together, producing an un almost reverb-like sound. Cave is definitely a more fitting name because it sounds messier than a proper reverb. This mode to me is the trickiest to put to very, very good use, not just as a general strange reverb. We can tune the individual resonating frequencies, keeping pressed the E or F keys. Let's try that using some water sound, so we can have like a, a bass noise generator, like that. Yeah, and if you keep press the E or F keys and then the corresponding note you want to tune, you will hear some frequency changing. Honestly, it will require a somewhat trained ear and a good dose of patience to scalp the sound as you like. In this mode, the octave switch changes the type of cave, even though to me the effect is mostly the same as an octave switch for the all intents and purposes. Let's talk about the last control available, gain. Keeping pressed the R mode key, the white keys on the lower keyboard will set the pre-clipper gain, namely the microphone amplification, while the upper keyboard is for post-clipper gain. The gain available is a lot, and you can easily use it to resonate the sounds of rain outside of the window, and also some ASMR from several meters away. Let's try that trying to be careful. So let's start with the volume down. I will crank the pre and post gain and let's go to microphone. One, two, three. Yes. One, two, three. Now I'm just whispering and I'm around half a meter away, very quiet, with my headphones on, I can barely hear myself whispering. Let's use the GRP sound I used before, still on the Digitact. I will start with a C, with the lowest gain. I mean, there is still the C note on the left channel keyboard, but this is like sub-zero, very line level, so I will usually start from the D. And notice that the gain will affect only the wet channel, let's say, so we have to get the mix up. the overdrive but we can keep the volume down using the upper keyboard and go very overdriven all right on the back you will find stereo in midi and stereo out all on 3.5 millimeters jacks the power comes from a lovely USB Type-C connector. As a final reminder, since it's also written in the biggest font on the whole instrument, please remember to start with ultra low volumes and especially using the microphone while attached to speakers, beware of really deafening feedbacks, possibly with piercing resonating notes at the tuna mix. 
that's all for today. I hope you will find it useful and see you next time.